Venerable religious and dear parishioners, on this Mission Sunday, in which we think of what we can do to help spread the Catholic faith, I want to speak about something you've heard many a time, but which it is certainly well worth to keep speaking about. I'm talk going to talk about the Holy Rosary. And I want to look at historically what the Rosary has accomplished. And by the way, I'm reminded of a story that St. Louis Marie de Montfort has in his book, The Secret of the Rosary, in which Our Lady appeared to Blessed Alan de la Roche, one of the great missionaries, missionary preachers of his time, and appeared to him while he was preparing a sermon. And basically she said, put your sermon aside. Preach the rosary. And it would have been a very fine sermon, I'm sure. But it's a point to remember the rosary needs to be preached. It has accomplished so much good. It will help bring about the conversion of many souls. It will bring about peace. It will do what the story in the bulletin reminds us that one day through the rosary and the scapular, the world will be saved. This doesn't take anything away, of course, from the infinite value of the Mass and the value of the sacraments. Those are the primary means of grace. But in praying the rosary, we become better disposed to receive these superabundant graces from the Mass and the sacraments. You see, that's how it works. And also think about how many are deprived of the Mass and the sacraments. How are they going to get the graces they need? The Holy Rosary, the scapular. I was just reading some of the history, as I said, of, um, of what the Rosary accomplished. And although these stories aren't about conversion per se, they are about protection, but nevertheless, the conversions absolutely do happen. But let's review the power of the rosary. By the way, this is my first rosary sermon for this month, because on the first Sunday of the month, I was on Mass Circuit, and then Father and I had the 8 o'clock Mass last Sunday, so... I'm not bel overly belaboring the point about the Holy Rosary. But anyway, the, I was reading about the Battle of Lepanto. 1571, October 7th, was a turning point in the history of Europe. Whoever won this naval battle would win Europe. It was truly a battle between Christians and Muslims. Who was going to win? By the way, the Christian fleet had been outnumbered, or was outnumbered. It took real effort even for that lesser number to be organized. And Pope St. Pius V, as ruler of the Papal States, he had to take a major part in helping fund and organize and finding even a leader, which he did, Don Juan of Austria. He couldn't get help from some of the countries of Europe, most notably France. Also, he couldn't get any help from England because England had broken away from the Catholic Church under Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. So, St. Pius X urged all of Catholics, pray the rosary. He himself prayed and mortified himself, offered up more sacrifices to God, and he urged everyone else to do the same. And when the naval battle was beginning, who had the wind at their backs, which was the advantage? The Turks did but just before the battle began, the wind shifted. Now, the Catholic fleet 
had the wind at its back, a major strategic advantage or a major advantage in warfare at that time. You see, God works out these seemingly even little things that end up being major things. I was also reading how no one failed to go to confession and communion of all the soldiers and sailors. Every one of them went to confession and holy communion took the rosary with him into battle. It was a decisive victory. Again, the power of the rosary to bring about things that need to be brought about. In our more modern times, I'm going back now to World War II, Remember that the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Interestingly, but very inspiringly, there was a Jesuit religious house in, um, in Hiroshima, and there was a Franciscan religious house in Nagasaki. And both of these religious houses were known for their devotion to praying the Holy Rosary. And when these atom bombs dropped and destroyed these cities in a horrifying way that only an atom bomb can, these religious priests and brothers survived. Let me tell you about that. In Hiroshima, a small community of Jesuit fathers lived in a church house near the parish church. When the city was destroyed by the atomic bomb, all eight members of the small Jesuit community escaped unscathed, while every other person who was within roughly one and a half kilometers from the center of the explosion died. The church house where the Jesuits lived was still standing while buildings in every direction from it were leveled. Father Hubert Schiffer was one of these eight Jesuit survivors. He was 30 when it exploded, and afterwards he lived another 33 years in good health. He had just finished offering Mass the morning of August 6th, went into the rectory and sat down at breakfast, and then... The, the bomb went off, or the bomb exploded. Suddenly, he writes, or in his words, suddenly a terrific explosion filled the air with one bursting thunderstroke. An invisible force lifted me from the chair, hurled me through the air, shook me, battered me, whirled me around and round like a leaf in a gust of autumn wind. The next thing he remembered, he opened his eyes, and he was lying on the ground. He looked around, and there was nothing in any direction. Everything was leveled. Other than some pieces of glass in the back of his neck, though, he was not hurt. After the end of the war, American army doctors and scientists explained to Father Schiffer that his body would begin to deteriorate because of the intense radiation to which he had been exposed. But to the doctor's continued amazement, whenever he was tested, he showed no radiation or ill effects from the bombing. So none of the other Jesuits uh, had this same radiation sick sickness, and they issued a statement at a certain point. The, Father Schiffer said he was interviewed over 200 times because, I mean, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. You don't just have an atom bomb dropped close by and survive with no ill effects. But the Jesuits wrote this, we believe that we survived because we were living the message of Fatima. We lived and prayed the rosary of Our Lady daily in that church house. Basically the same story was told by the Franciscans in Nagasaki about their survival the power of the rosary to protect, the power of the rosary to convert others. By the way, the block rosary 
I know some of you still do this. Unfortunately, the block rosary is not as going as strongly or as in as organized fashion as it been in past years when Mrs. Dorothy de Pianti passed away. She, uh, well, even before she passed away, she wasn't able to keep this going. But remember that this was revealed by Our Lady during World War II. So during this time, when men were dying in terrible uh, num amounts of numbers, Our Lady said, get your neighbors in your block, even if they're not Catholics. Ask them to come and pray the rosary with you. You're going to see some amazingly good things happen, and among them, peace, protection, and these men that you're praying for in battle, they will come back. They will come back to you. In most cases, unscathed. And needless to say, non-Catholics converted because of the rosary being prayed. Don't forget that. In Austria, after World War II, it, the country was divided between four countries, America, France, the, Britain, and Russia. The section of Austria controlled by the communists was the richest and included the city of Vienna. The Viennese were subject to all the atrocities and tyrannies of communism. There was a priest, Father Petrus Pavlicek. He made a pilgrimage to one of the main Marian shrines in Austria. And he heard Our Lady say, Do as I say, and there will be peace. He founded a Holy Rosary Crusade. And to, and to, this was in 1947. By 1955, despite all indications to the contrary, the communists got up and left. It was because of the rosary processions. That reminds us of the rosary marches we have right here in Spokane. We do it during the summer months. They were able to get a tenth of Austria's population to participate in these rosary processions. You're talking about half a million people in various cities of Austria doing rosary marches. The communists left. In Brazil, November 1964, issue of the Reader's Digest, there was a story titled, The Country That Saved Itself. That country was Brazil. The stage was all set. This is, by the way, in the Reader's Digest. This is not your average Catholic magazine. And it's saying, this country saved itself from communism. The stage was all set in 1961 to take over Brazil, just like Cuba. But who thwarted this communist takeover? The women of Brazil with their rosaries. What were the men doing, by the way? Why weren't they involved? Especially men, fathers of families. They're supposed to be the spiritual leaders. But I don't know the reason or the answer. But anyway, especially the women of Brazil were involved in, in, the, in the rosary. Without the women, said one of the leaders of the counter-revolution, we could have never have halted Brazil's plunge towards communism. And it's too long to read here, but they organized rosary processions. They were promoting the rosary over and over again. That, that came through, pray the rosary. And again, and this, it, these stories are good to reflect upon on Mission Sunday. Yes, these were about protection. These were about peace. But can we not see the power of conversion? And remember, it's ultimately a matter of God's grace. I remember Father Dennis saying over and over again, you can preach the truth to people till you're blue in the face and they'll still reject it. He experienced that over and over again. He went on hundreds of, of lectures, uh, uh, lecture tours, or at least gave hundreds and hundreds of lectures 
so many and he talked about the message of Fatima he talked about the great apostasy happening in the Vatican II church so many people disagree with him uh, got angry with him said we're going to prove you rocks I'm evil he almost was assaulted at times that he kept on preaching the rosary and he could see it you can tell people the truth but they need God's grace without God's grace you will you will reject the truth you'll be blind to the truth you won't see it you won't want to see it so how do we get this grace prayer and sacrifice the Holy Rosary has a very preeminent role in this whole thing sometimes this, it can be quite difficult to pray the rosary isn't it you're tired you're or you you know you have other things maybe you'd like to do but you that's part of the sacrifice you set everything else aside you pray the holy rosary so on this mission sunday i ask you to be an apostle of the rosary be an army of the Holy Rosary. And remember, always pray it with others if you can. There's always more value, more power, because as St. John Riviani says, if you light a straw on fire, it quickly flames out. But put a pile of straw together, you get a large amount of heat and flame, because together they do more than they do singly. Be this fervent army. Be these apostles. And we can be assured that many will be brought to the knowledge and love and practice of our holy Catholic faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.